everybody, it is Julie. Welcome back to Pages and Pens. Today I am here with a chatty video that is not going up on a Saturday. Today we are going to talk about how I read. Somebody asked me this recently and I figured oh, why not film a video and let you guys know exactly how I read. And I'm not talking about like I open a book, I scan the words. No, I'm going to go ahead and let you know how I pick my TBRs, where I read, how I read so much in a month, how I decide if I choose an audiobook or a physical book. We're just going to break down all the things that go into like my reading life and let you know a little bit more about my reading process. First of all, picking my TBR has to do with a couple things. One, is there a readathon or a reading challenge that's going to take place that month? If so, what books fit the categories? That's number one. Number two, I will go through some of my oldest book hauls and go over the lists for those and see if there's anything on there that's really calling to me. If there's a book on there that I haven't read from one of my oldest hauls kind of calling to me, I will try to add that in there. I am still a quote unquote mood reader. I want to read things that I'm excited about, but I also try to mix in a classic, something outside of my normal genre or something that I'm really nervous about each month as well to push myself from just staying complacent and sticking with what I know and want to read the most because the more that I ignore those books that I'm like iffy on the longer they're gonna stay on my TBR shelf. Am I right? Maybe it's a thriller or a historical fiction or a non-fiction or a classic. I try to add one of those in a month as well just to try to make sure that I'm reading diversely. Speaking of reading diversely, I will also try to make sure that I have a diverse read on every TBR, whether that be race, religion, sexuality. I want to make sure that I've got diversity somewhere in my TBR. I also try to do my best about having an own voices book every month. Then outside of that, I try to do a pretty even mix of fantasy, high fantasy, contemporary. I try not to stick with anything wholly for an entire month except for contemporary May so that I give myself variety. And I also try to go aggressive with my TBR so that I've got room to play around, figure out what I want to read as I go. I also will only make my TBRs with my physical copies of books. I do not include audiobooks. So so when it comes to audiobooks and how I determine what I listen to in physical format versus audio format, the answer is pretty easy. I use the Overdrive app from my local library for audiobooks. There are not as many audiobooks in my particular library branch, and I think there's like 32 libraries in my county, so there's a lot to pull from. But what I will normally do is go through and look for audiobooks that are available right now, and then I will just sort through all of them, and any that kind of pique my interest, I will go ahead and ask to borrow. I very rarely rarely seek out a specific audiobook and then request it or get put on a wait list for it. The majority of the time I will just take whatever's available. For example, right now I'm listening to Caraval. Caraval is a book that I have the physical copy of, but the audiobook was available, so I figured why the heck not and I'm listening to it right now. Otherwise, I will try to specifically go for books that I don't own that I can read in audiobook form. I also will go for audiobooks of longer, larger books that are intimidating to read in physical form. So I read Night Film, Carry On. I read Lair of Dreams and The Diviners from Libba Bray. I read all of those in audiobook. I also read Night Circus in audiobook. Those are all ones that I was a little bit iffy on reading. Wasn't really sure if I was going to like them or not. Also very large books and listening to them was a way for me to just read them and not have to worry as much. So I think that they're a great alternative. I will also listen to books if I've heard that the audio versions are really superior to the actual written book or add something really great to the audiobook. It's really just a matter of what's available, what I'm kind of nervous about reading in the first place, but I typically try to go for books that I don't physically own that I can read in audiobook form. So there is no like huge rhyme or reason there. And then I also have for my TBR every month the Job in the Librarians Book Club and then I will try to also have a traveling book coming back to me or a traveling book going out or something else that I'm reading probably with somebody from the buddy read group that is going on as well. All of that kind of comes together and culminates in a massive TBR that I just try to do my best with and that's how I decide what to read. I try to make it diverse and interesting for me so I don't get too bored and just include a little mix of everything. I know that was a little bit all over the place. If you have any other specific questions about how I establish a TBR, go ahead and let me know, but that's pretty much it. So now that we know how I pick my audiobooks and how I determine whether it's a physical copy or an audiobook that I listen to or read, and also how I establish TBRs, we can go on to my actual reading. I read as much as I can throughout the day. There's a lot of downtime with the kids and 
there's a lot of downtime waiting in cars and car line I will always have a physical book with me always always have a physical book with me so I will have at least my nook or a paperback with me at all times I try not to travel with hardbacks I also have my phone at all times which has my overdrive app so I always have an audiobook with me as well so while I'm cleaning at work or doing laundry or dishes I'm listening to an audiobook while I'm driving to places not with the kids in the car because audiobooks with the kids in the car is a little bit difficult but if I'm like going to pick up the kids I'll listen to an audiobook on my way there turn off my car pull out a physical book wait for the kids get them in the car go wherever we're going to like sports for example I've got to wait there for an hour and I'm reading a physical book while I wait and then on my way home from work and my way to work I also listen to audiobooks any kind of road trips things like that I'm listening to audiobooks a lot of my reading is done throughout the day as I am waiting different places or going different places that is what I'm doing so I have the benefit of driving alone the majority of the time so I can listen to the audiobooks while I'm driving when I get home I like to have physical books to just relax with so I will typically have one book that I'm reading while I'm out and about at work and then I leave that one in the car and I read a separate one in here which is normally my hardbacks or larger books that I will read at home anytime that I am doing any kind of comment responding to comments things like that on YouTube I'm listening to an audiobook if I'm doing my makeup at home in order to film for the length of time that I'm doing my makeup I listen to an audiobook a lot of my time is being utilized to read as well as do other things to prepare for my channel etc so that's kind of how I get through as many books as I do the other question that I got was how do I determine my ratings and how do I determine whether to DNF or when to DNF a series for me a one-star book is something that I was able to get through but literally despised and this has to have serious grammatical formatting issues as well as just a storyline characters that I don't get along with. A two-star read for me is one that was subpar but passable. I really did enjoy it. I had some serious serious issues with it. It's not one that I'm going to recommend to everybody or anybody but I could see at least some merit in it. A three-star read for me is one that is good. I really liked it. I enjoyed it. It wasn't phenomenal. It wasn't awful. It was middle of the road and if you want to read it go ahead and read it. I'm not going to tell you not to but I'm also probably not going to sing its praises. And a four-star read for me is one that's really good. I super super enjoy it and I'm absolutely recommending this book to pretty much everybody. It's got good character development, good plot development. For me a four-star read is just missing a little bit of something. Either it's got just a little bit too tropey or there's a little bit too much like girl on girl hate or it's a little bit slow to get into or the ending didn't quite wrap up the way that I wanted it to. Something along those lines. A five star read for me is one that I will be talking about for forever aka The Hollows or Six of Crows duology or Harry Potter or The Lord of the Rings or something that just becomes an instant classic, a book that I love that I just cannot stop thinking about. I'm thinking about those characters long long after I'm done reading them. The characters are rich and real and I'm invested in them. I've probably cried. I've definitely cried and I just love it. So that's a five star read for me. As far as DNFing, I really try to push through. I try to see the merit in a series. Here's the thing. If it's like an obscure book that really I have no interest in ever talking about again and I'm just not able to get into it, I DNF it. But if it's a series or a book that I'm really hoping I can finally understand what everybody else sees or I really want to be able to discuss it, take for example the Foxhole Court series, I pushed through because I wanted to understand what everybody else saw and then I wanted to be able to talk about it intelligently and say that I had at least given the whole book a chance. But then there's other books like Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, for example, where I've picked it up three times and I've only gotten 45 pages in and I just cannot get into it. I'm not officially DNFing it, but for right now I'm done with it. Sometimes I will DNF just because I'm having a really hard time getting into the books. Other times I will DNF because it's just god awful and I cannot stand the characters. I can't stand their voice. I can't stand the way that the plot is being driven. It basically just comes down to like not forcing myself to read things that are just miserable. If they're super problematic or I just can't connect to it, I'm not going to push myself to try to force myself to read something 
I have way too many books to read to read something that I hate. That's about everything. Honestly, I went through how I select books, how I select audiobooks versus physical copies, where and how I read, and how I rate. So I think that's everything for the how I read. If you have any other specific questions about my reading process or how I read, definitely go ahead and let me know down below in the comments and I will be sure to answer it for you. And for that, that's how I read, guys. That's everything for right now. So if you like this video, do give me a big old thumbs up, click subscribe, and I will talk to all of you in my next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.